Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm subbing for our supervisor this evening. If we could all do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first item on the agenda is public comment. I don't see any public <laughs> standing up, so I guess there will not be any. Uh, approval of the minutes for the April the 11th meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the April 11th meeting. I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. I abstain. Okay. No, there is no one opposed, so the ayes have it. The motion is carried. The minutes are accepted. Okay, communications. Um, most of this is from the supervisor. Actually, I'm going to wait and give that under his report. So we'll go. There is one letter he has on the agenda we'll read. It's from the New York State Town Clerks Association, and it says, Dear Mr. Livesey, on behalf of the New York State Town Clerks Association, it is my honor and pleasure to inform you that June Patterson, town clerk, has been awarded this association certification as a registered municipal clerk. This prestigious award recognizes the professional competency of Mrs. Patterson in fulfilling the responsibilities of her office. Certification is granted only after an applicant has demonstrated that they have met the stringent education and experience requirements established under NYSTCA. We are very pleased to have June as a member of our association and deeply appreciate your encouragement, meaning the town, of her involvement with the association and the registered municipal clerk program. It reflects your understanding of the purpose of our association and your commitment to to professional growth and development. Congratulations, June. Okay, and the fiscal report for the total of the bills and claims for $42,897.61. That included $1,432.86 for American Towers, $2,084 for FOTSIS Incorporated for V&T Legal Work, $2,758.68 for First Niagara credit card. That is the credit card that the town uh, uses and it is kept track of by our, our controller. $1,877.27 was an Orange and Rockland bill. $1,500 was for Pitney Bowes for postage. And there was $6,332.25 general legal services, $850 for a senior bus trip. And they were the larger bills. There are others, but they, those were the large ones. Um, which brings us up to board liaison reports. Would you like to start? Okay. Want me to go first? Sure. sure. Okay, so uh, last Thursday was the uh, planning board meeting. Um, uh, the deputy supervisor was there, June, uh, myself in the audience, and uh, council was there as the attorney for the planning board as well. And um, it was a, uh, I would say the room was 80% full. Very full. Yeah, <laughs> there weren't too many open seats, and um, it was uh, centered, uh, most of the people there were in attendance for the uh, Corbin Hill development, which would be of interest to the community, and in that uh, what's being proposed is... Uh, well, it goes back to when I was on the planning board of uh, finally moving the, um, the commercial development on the site, which looks like two restaurants, um, both of which would have drive-through capability. The one restaurant um, has not been determined. The other one is uh, more than likely going to be a Dunkin' Donuts, or almost certainly, or, or definitely. If this project move fo <clears throat> moves forward, absolutely, it's a Dunkin' okay. Donuts. Um, the Corbin Hill residents turned out because they are, um, if I could summarize, they are still very upset over the water situation up there. Um, one comment was made um, 
why why it hasn't become town yet you know they're very anxious for that to happen um just in defense of the town and the village i would say that um despite whatever their issues are up there uh, you know we had we had a settlement master and and known mtbe contamination so it's probably fair to say that the issues up there are still contentious and not you know both parties seem firm that they they had an issue or there wasn't an issue is that yeah issues are still being worked out between the parties uh but just to add to that quickly we the the town uh has participated in discussions and the public service commission has um ordered uh the parties to continue to talk including a discussion directly with the town of highlands about the possibility of town water actually hopeful of having that meeting on Thursday but we're waiting for some confirmations Um, the other the other issue brought forth um, I guess where the application has um, some difficulty is uh, with the traffic uh, flow and there were three options that they could do no left-hand turn coming out of the uh, of the new commercial entrance uh, uh, exits or an entrance you wouldn't be allowed to make a left into it and you wouldn't be able to make the left out of it um a traffic light which is uh very difficult to get out of dot and they brought forth a new proposal not proposal idea where um there would be only three lanes on 9w a center turn lane and one lane in each direction and um i personally thought that was very interesting uh, both uh, as a traffic calming uh, situation, helping out with the uh, the issue in front of the school, um, and um, just badly, it's always seems to be needed through that that stretch of road, and so some synergy. Correct, and with it's the, limited to sort of <coughs> the area of commercial development, right? It's not not going back up the hills and right, right. All and and that is building. a very busy strip there, right? And with two more commercial establishments there be even busier and the police chief had had meetings with dot um and not too long ago over what what seems to be a a bit of a safety issue there in front of the uh, elementary school so it seems like we have you know a lot of synergy going there to to do something along that stretch of road it'll be interesting to see how that works out um we have uh, the only other thing I have on. We have a meeting this Thursday morning at eight o'clock uh, with the uh, with the town engineer and the sewer department head over uh, um, details of uh, sewer plan improvements. So that's, that's set up and ready to go. Very good. That should be an interesting meeting, also. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that should be good. And uh, um, I want to say May. S- I saw an email, May 7th, I think, is the Great River Sweep. Is that a Saturday? I don't know. I'm, I'm not so sure. I did it's just Monday. everybody keep an eye out for the Great River Sweep. And, um, there'll be some activity Seven. definitely down at the marina, and I'm sure along the whole riverfront. Ed Nugent was uh, championing that. So. Good. That's all I got. Hi. Welcome back. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Uh, A few things, Um, actually three. The first being that last week I attended uh, the ribbon cutting ceremony for the newly opened high school varsity baseball field. What a fabulous field. Uh, A lot of work, I guess, uh, by a host of people have been, as have contributed to that that, that, uh, project. And, and, and so what I gathered, had not having lived here for some time, is that you know it was such a grand day for folks who had put all this work and effort into it for so many years to see it uh, come to fruition. And so it was a great day uh, for the town, uh, uh, a great day for the student athletes. It was just a fabulous event. I'm glad uh, I was invited to that. Uh, um, by Miss Miss Mary Jane Pitt over there, she's an <laughs> inv- invitation. Um, the next thing that I went to uh, that was equally as grand, if not if not bigger, for the community was the Little League uh, opening day, and it wasn't just Little League; it was actually softball and 
the Pony League, it's called, I think, right? Yes. Pony Town, so yeah. Ponytail yeah. League and the Little League joint opening day. Now, I've never experienced that when I was coming up. But I tell you what, when I was <laughs> coming up and they put a baseball uniform on me and let me walk down Main Street, I felt like I was 10 feet tall at 10 years old. I still remember my coach to this day, a man, a man gentleman named Mr. Dave Fleming, and I played for the A's. But, but what that shows you is, as much as I have forgotten in my lifetime after 30 years of military, I remember that. And, and that's the thing that I want to take home is that these kids, what they experience this past week with a fabulous parade and this joint uh, event that was so well done by uh, Mr. Aaron Falk and Mr. Nick Padias and all the other folks that were involved in putting that thing together. I'm telling you, it was world class. When I, I got pictures and I saw the faces of those little kids when they called their name out and they ran on that field, they're proud just like I was 40 years ago when I was playing. But what I also took away is that this one event probably brought every demographic within our community together. And, and I don't know that there's any other event that, that has pulled that off, but, but this one did. I looked around and I saw faces that I didn't see at other things, but they were there for baseball. And, uh, and that was a good thing to see all the community come together for this opening day. I, I was not able to attend. Um, I had a prior engagement, but I understand it was really great. It was fabulous. And, and you're right, it made the kids feel like they each individual one was the star. Absolutely. So well done uh, to the town of Highlands Recreation Department and all the other people involved, because I know it had to be much more than just Aaron. And, uh, and keep that going. Sustain whatever you did this year, because I think they just they broke the mold this year. Um, and I got one more thing to say. Forgive me for sounding uh, clogged, but I am clogged. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 have, I have some terrible allergies, and so I'm dealing with that. But, but I try to get out this last thing, and that Welcome is... Welcome back to New York. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, right? Uh, the seniors. The seniors are on my mind. I want the seniors to know at home, if you're watching this, uh, we love you so much. We thank you for, for all your leadership and support that you've done throughout the years of this community, and we have not... Uh, forgotten you. Now, and I bring that up because I remember uh, Ms. Joni came in uh, it's probably two months ago and requested that that we support uh, the seniors. And so I just want her to know we haven't forgotten her. And as the liaison of recreation, my intent is to get over uh, to see them soon and see what it is specifically we can do um, to help. But they are on my mind, so I just wanted to. I think what they out. need right now is a, is a trip planner oh boy so, <laughs> to plan their, their bus trips okay well we're going to work on that that's all i have thank you so much adrian um so I, I i don't have i don't have a whole lot hardly anything at all no um on saturday uh when when the uh, little league and ponytail league um kickoff was happening there was another wonderful event that was going on um which is where i was which was that um the center was <clears throat> hosting an earth day open house and so uh olga anderson who has been doing an amazing job uh with a gardening um class for young people which is started uh, about a month and a half ago or so um which she is uh does on saturday mornings they um she and her um her group of students hosted an open house at the center there was um some um several different people there with uh there was a group uh that that had information about beekeeping um the the students that were in the gardening club had done um a number of different projects that were there that were on display <clears throat> my daughter was there teaching um how to plant and uh other other there there were a number of activities and so it was very nicely done and I just want to give a shout out to Olga and also to um, Sean McHugh who has been working very closely with her um, doing this gardening program um, the ultimate goal and actually starting this week is the students that they've been teaching um, about gardening are going to be working in the community garden every week and so the community garden if you're not familiar with it is a plot of land um, in front of the Holy Innocence Church um, that was cultivated they, they started working on it some years ago and um, 
there's there's a number of um, things that they want to do with it, but one of the one of the goals is actually to produce food in the community garden that can be used um, in the food pantry. So, oh, very nice. in in addition to just the you know canned goods and such that are distributed in the food pantry, there'll be actually fresh fresh vegetables and such. Um, so it's a wonderful project. I'm um, glad to you know. Uh, have the opportunity for my daughter to be part of it and they did a really really nice job with the the open house so that's my that's all I got <laughs> and building on your report on the center this morning they had their little history get together and that little group seems to be growing and this morning they talked about the Bear Mountain Bridge its construction and its history so anyone that's interested in joining that little history group um, it's the fourth Monday of every month at 930 at the center and for my report um, I I was also as Bill gave a very nice report on the um, public hearing for the Planning Board I had been trying to get there for many months and finally made it on a very good night because it was extremely interesting and I was really glad that I was there they also, do great, they do a great job, right? Yeah, they, they do. We have a terrific board, planning board. As well. yeah. <clears throat> um, chaired by Eric Smith. Yes, he's very good. Um, these, these zone, the planning board, the village and the town planning boards are meeting and have been probably since last summer off and on with the county um, planning committee to update and make the village and the town uh, zoning codes more similar so it's easy to work with and they met they've met a couple of times recently and they met the uh, I think it was last Wednesday night it was the only one that was able to be there was Eric and, and I just sit in to make sure that it keeps going along there the input is from them they're much more familiar with it but that is moving along and hopefully with then maybe by the end of the summer they'll have something to present to the board to take a look at and make comments or recommendations or say oh this is wonderful let's do it you know um, the next thing I have is the Highland Falls Fire Department had their installation dinner on Saturday night it was very well done um, the committee which President Bill Solon headed uh, did a fabulous job it was a very nice dinner our police department is going to conduct interviews hopefully on May the 4th and the chief will be sending out um, a memo to the entire board so anyone that would like to sit in on that he's going to try to do it more towards the evening so you know it's easier for everyone to get there that would like to attend and we do have a couple of slots that need to be filled and Sunday I think the Fort Montgomery Fire Department did it. I did not get down there, but I know that the Highland Falls Fire Department had an open house. Uh, a couple of our lady firefighters put it all together. They did a fabulous job. Mary Jane was there. They had very nice displays, and, and um, I congratulate them. They did a very good job. So anyone that would like to join either fire department, <laughs> just contact them. <laughs> Tuesday nights for Highland Falls, Thursday nights for Fort Montgomery. Okay, and I'll tell you what the supervisor did. Uh, supervisor Livesey attended uh, the Golden Award Reception. That is a, recep a short ceremony and reception celebrating Daniel Cross and her Girl Scout Gold Award. It was a Sacred Heart Holy Angels Playground pickup. Apparently she did a lot of work to clean up, straighten up, and update the playground up there to earn her golden her gold award and I believe that is equivalent to the Boy Scouts Eagle Award mm -hmm. so congratulations Danielle Cross you did a great job and the supervisor was there for that and then we have a letter addressed to Supervisor Livesey on behalf of our directors producers and the entire cast and crew we would like to take this opportunity to express our sincere gratitude to you in the town of Highlands for being a part of our production. <clears throat> our work was a tremendous success and we couldn't have done it without your patience, cooperation, and efforts throughout the process. By opening your doors to our production, not only did you help us to create the aesthetics for the project, 
but you also help to support an industry that employs many of our neighbors and is an increasingly vital part of New York's economy. We take great care in our work and strive to make each film project a positive experience in hopes that the next project will be welcomed with open arms. Once again, it was a true pleasure working with you, and we hope to have the opportunity to do so again. Look for us in the theaters later this year, and best of luck with Mindock Park. So I, I'm not sure whether that was the group that did the still shots recently, or it was a film, you know, someone that did films. But um, whichever group, apparently they were very pleased with the cooperation in the town. Sorry, excuse me, who was the letter from? Uh, it's from Check Checkmate. Okay, so we're up to if our attorney would like to or has anything that he'd like to comment on? Uh, well, I can always come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> Your choice, you can, or you don't have to. <laughs> well, um, well, I guess I'll give the board homework, which is the, the, the mobile home park code uh, is chapter 130 of your code. Um, and there's been a couple recent issues where we've relied on the code, uh, but the code was done, I believe, in 1982, um, so about, about 30 years old at this point. Um, and so it may be that you want to look at some potential um, changes and updating of that code. Uh, in particular, the issue, I guess, that I would draw your attention to um, is, is um, whether or not uh, uh, movable RVs um, should be permitted in the um, existing mobile home parks. Um, I can go on and on, and I won't, but once you all take a look, we mm -hmm. can have a further discussion. Um, but uh, I, I do believe the village code allows that, speaking of having codes that are similar to enforce. Um, and I do believe um, there's been some use in that regard uh, in, in your parks as well, it's, um, but it's created some um, monitoring issues and, and, and so. It's grown recently and um, from what I'm hearing is it's predominantly uh, contractors that are working long-term jobs uh, locally that are utilizing that as a uh, means of residence while they're doing that. Sure. Um, and the board should take a look at that from a, a, a town perspective. That may be a good use. Uh, that may um, both generate income for the park, which allows them to take care of their other residents as well and provide services. Um, and it also has people potentially staying um, for weeks or months um, in your community and using your resources sources as well um, so it's an issue of whether or not that's an appropriate use which it may be or it may not be um, for you all to decide and review um, either way it should be monitored right so that we don't create uh, enforcement issues um, so it's, it's a good point so the code is weak on this right and the code or does it address uh, it we're or? still discussing that with the uh, code enforcement officer but a uh, a quick review would suggest that uh, it's probably not permitted by your existing code. There might okay. be certain exceptions. Um, again, and not to belabor it, right, but um, there would also be some site plan issues, but my understanding of the issue is that uh, where there are <coughs> empty spaces, they're being slotted in and they're being slotted in for fairly long-term use, but at that point they do hook up to the systems um, within the uh, community, um, and the community then uses your resources, right? It all funnels through to your sewer plant or water, whatever the case may be. Um, so uh, emergency services also have to respond, uh, which is fine, generally speaking, so long as they know that they're confronting whatever types of unit they're confronting, or one week there might be something, and later there might be different things so all of that should be on a site plan so people understand it 
proper numbers can be assigned, etc. cetera. Um, but, uh, but again, the code, uh, like all things, um, 30 years is a fairly long time ago from what the thoughts were on how we did things. Um, and so it may need some updating, but in particular, that issue probably should be at least reviewed. Okay. Well, I'm impressed Justin gave us homework. <laughs> Very you good, can bounce Justin. bounce it back to me and say... Uh, <laughs> well, we I'd should. appreciate some public input on it, too. So it's good to talk about it publicly and just because uh, I'm not sure where I'm standing here. Absolutely. Sure pros and cons yet. Or. Absolutely. And ultimately... Right? I mean, ultimately, like any code change, if you were moving forward with proposed code changes, there would be public hearings as well. But it's always nice to get an issue out, out in the open up front, and the, the users or the community members uh, may have some opinions as to what's most appropriate. We at least need to look at it and come up with an answer. Mm -hmm. More, or that's it? That's it. <laughs> I think you just received your marching orders. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Is, is, is there some sort of timeline on this? Like we, by next meeting, going to discuss it again or something? Well, um, it's I'm your homework. It. So yeah. uh, if yeah. you're going to do it by then, um, <laughs> in all it? seriousness, we don't want the issue to go on as it is, yeah. just sort of not quite in lockstep with the code and potentially creating issues. We'd rather uh, putting have a discussion. Putting our building inspector in a tough spot. Uh, uh, correct. Um, but, um, but it does take a little time to r r review code and make changes. And if you ultimately are recommending changes, that process takes four to six weeks, scheduling public hearing time. Um, I think we'll hear from Parks anyway. I think the town clerk wants to contact them on other issues. So it's good to do it sooner rather than later. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that question probably was more for my <laughs> colleagues than it was for you. <laughs> um, so we want to give ourselves a timeline to, to kind of rehash this. Well, I would think maybe two weeks should be enough to read the code and look at the issue mm -hmm. for the next meeting, maybe. Okay. Yeah, so you have the village code to look at, and that seems to be the, diametrically the opposite of what ours is. Or village code, my understanding is they permit it, correct. Um, <laughs> I can uh, I can send you both electronically or yeah, PDF that'd versions. Good. That'd be perfect. Like. Yeah. Yes, please. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's my homework. Thank you. Okay, so we're up to general business, and I don't think that we have anything else this evening unless someone has something that you want to bring up oh ma'am okay <laughs> which would lead us to any other business and I guess there is none <laughs> <laughs> any public comment we have three people from the public any comment people <laughs> well it's good to see everyone here uh, no executive session so if everyone is satisfied with the meeting and has no further comment i'll accept the motion to adjourn i'll make that motion i'll second it <laughs> all in favor aye. aye aye thank you good um, meeting before Julie. we're off of the air i would just like to say i really truly enjoy working with my colleagues up here on the board and our town attorney <laughs> thank you. they are all very Good people. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh